Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Instructions for Humanity. It is Tahira, Mother of the Ages. I'm your supernatural quantum healer. I do past life regression quantum healing sessions and my signature session with my celestial sister, Kiahe, uh, quantum telekinetic light language readings with remote healing. Guys, book a session with me, book a session with us. We have been healing deep soul wounds soul tear, soul ties, removing generational curses, allowing you to find your highest and best timeline. And we seal that in. You guys have been getting rid of chronic pains that you've had for over 20 years. You guys have been upgraded, upgraded in your spiritual gifts by source. It's very beautiful. Guys, just uh, email me instructions number four humanity at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe. I put my heart and my soul into making these videos for you guys. We're going to touch back, talk about Kate Middleton, a long walk home, just to kind of do an energy check-in, her soul, because I feel as if Kate is being forgotten. So we're going to tap back in to that, her soul essence. Guys, me and Kiahe are going to do something and we need you guys to help us out. Put in the comments where you guys live. We're going to start traveling to you guys doing live sessions because if you guys are getting these results just with the remote healing in person the energy medicine is really magnified guys and we want to see you guys shift shape shift right in front of our eyes um so just if you like a session we do plan on going to the uk it just depends on you know how many people we get to sign up so just email instructors number four humanity at gmail.com we do want to be in the uk like the tail end of june like around like the, the 25th of some sorts right um and then you guys come in pairs too. bring your families we are finding that it's all connected we've been in sessions with you know sister and sister um you know mother and children and we are reading your soul chart. Why have you guys incarnated together? Is there any karmic debt? Is there anything that needs to be paid back? And once once you fix that karmic debt, the relationship with that family member changes. And then you guys will have this special bond with this special thing that, that you guys have done. So if you'd like that, if you're interested in that, uh, seeing us live in your city or country, just please email. Okay, let's tap in guys. Let's tap in. Guys, this is really sad because we're doing our part. The collective is doing our part to find Kate. But we are allowing media. We are allowing the palace. We are allowing the madman William to put out fake this and that. We are allowing them to get away with not telling us the truth about where is Kate? Where is Catherine? Where is the princess of Wales? Is the princess of Wales the same place the other princess of Wales is? So you can watch my Royals playlist. This will all be outlined. I don't even know if I need to recap really quickly in like 20 seconds. I had dreams about Kate being in the in-between, not necessarily passed all the way over, but not necessarily living. And I've been following the soul signature of Kate Middleton to the afterlife, that is where it has led us. So this has been a progression, but why isn't anyone looking for her? Why isn't anyone protesting outside the palace gate? So this just, this is scary. This is very scary, the fact that I really thought that humanity had reached this enlightenment. I, I really thought we were, I really thought we were there, but we are allowing our eyes, our physical eyes to deceive us. And this is what I feel like we need to tap into. So this is going to be kind of part two, Kate Middleton, a long walk home. Um, give me a few moments. I'm going to do some breathing, probably put myself in a little bit of self-hypnosis. And then we're going to just tap in to uh, Kate's energetic soul signature to see where her soul is currently on her journey. Okay.
Okay guys, so sometimes I pick up messages with just moving the air through my body. I can tell you that where Kate is, she is, it's in this, it's a floating sensation, but not that she's drifting, that she's coasting now. It's almost as if she has gained control of movements of self, right? And so I'm in a swimming sensation, but not the sensation I was before when I saw her kind of in, in the in-between, right? This is a controlled motion and she's showing me that wherever she is, she's breathing in new air. And as I take in this air that she's breathing, it's like, it's hard for me to acclimate myself to it as if it stops. It doesn't go through like my trachea, it stops there. So it tells me like wherever she is, that it's not here on earth. It is not, it is a different atmosphere that she is breathing in. And I was able to see some sort of portal of light here. It looked like she was looking from an ocean, some sort of water state, right? This is very interesting, some sort of water state. And it's almost like I saw her looking up and from in the ocean, some sort of ocean and how she can see the sunlight on the surface. So this is very interesting, guys. When we think about something like this, we almost it almost makes me think about being reincarnated. Right? Because it's not it's not a fearful feeling. This is not the same energetic read as before where Kate was trying to figure it out in the afterlife. I feel as if she has made her transition. She's breathing in new airs from new atmosphere, right? And she is now in a water state. A water is consciousness. And water is also how we get birth, right? To different realms and different worlds. And even if we were to choose to reincarnate here, we would need to be in a watery womb. So let's feel around. She seems to be in some sort of womb state floating. It doesn't feel like a physical womb. It feels more like a cosmic womb, like a universal, like a collective womb state that we go back to. Let's feel deeper into this womb space, okay? Wow. I just keep hearing re reborn of the reborn. It feels like she's in some sort of collective womb space, but she has a master. She's mastering movements of self. It's almost like everything. I feel like if she's kind of in a manifest manifestation bubble where she is learning. I feel like Kate is being trained spiritually. She's learning because I'm here and I'm kind of using my, my left uh, brain or my left essence here. And she's using it to call something forth and, and she's exerting very little energy. She, it's, effort, it's effortless what she's doing. She's in some sort of womb space, but she's, she's receiving knowledge and almost as if she is Practicing without practicing. She's just existing in this in this atmosphere and it is effortless to manifest here. Okay, let's see what else. She says, I'm real royalty here. I am real royalty. I, I felt the essence of her wrapping a silk kind of um, scarf like around her head and like kind of draping it here over one shoulder. She's like, I'm real royalty now. And as my eyes begin to tear up because it's, it's so beautiful. Um, this is what Kate was reaching for when she was on earth. On the, the tell end, she had, she had said she had started meditating, right? Um, she has started meditating and I'm, she's mentioning Megan. She's saying it was because of the Megan situation that I actually started meditating. She says she started meditating. She's had conversations with Megan before about meditation. Um, she didn't do anything then, you know, she just, you know, it was just like whatever. 
But when things became really difficult for her, prayers no longer soothed her. And she did find solace in meditation. And she took it to a next level. She was getting really good at it. I'm seeing images of Kate going into closets meditating. Kate was becoming an enlightened being. And so that's, I think, why that cloth was kind of a silk scarf was wrapped over her head. I think she would, I think she would do some sort of Indian practice when she meditated. I'm not sure if she was seeing some sort of guru, but I get the sense that she was seeing some sort of, I don't know, shaman, not necessarily shaman, some sort of guru. And she would, in her quiet spaces, in this closet space that I'm seeing her in, she would wrap like an Indian, you know, fabric around her and meditate and that's what she's showing me here in the spirit as well and where she is she's learned the art of manifestation it's effortless it's easy for her to do Let's see what else The veil will be removed. It will be removed from their eyes. When the clock strikes an unthinkable number, she's given reference to a tragedy here on earth. When the clock strikes an unthinkable number, when there is a event, a huge event that wakes up the greater wide humanity, this is when our eyes will be open. She's not waiting. She's not in the afterlife saying, hey, find me, find me. No, she's not. She's at peace. She's giving grace to humanity. She's saying, when the clock strikes an unthinkable number, when there is an unthinkable event that happens that affects so many people, this is when they will awaken. This is when the truth will come out about me. But for now, I'm giving grace because where I am is bountiful. There is no lack here. I'm still royalty here. I'm in this enlightenment state. And she's just coasting, guys. She's floating. She's coasting. She's in some sort of cosmic womb. Now, is she really in water? No. But this is the essence. These waves are um, frequency waves that she is in the etheric realms. And she's coasting. These are waves of frequency, right? This is what she's learning. This is what the last hell end of her life has led her to. She was in deep meditation. And, you know, believe it or not, she is giving some, she's giving reference to Megan. That Megan mentioned this. She never meditated with Megan or anything. She said it wasn't until much later that she actually did her own research and really saw this to be a really good practice for herself. Um, but she is giving reference to that and. She wants you guys to know there's absolutely no strife. Where she is, it's absolutely love. And she's rooting for everyone, even William. She's rooting for everyone. There is no lack in her heart. There is no lack. She wants everyone to know that. When, when they are ready to find me, they will find me. That's what she's saying. When they are ready. But for now, the game must go on. She's calling life a game. This game must go on. But when they are ready, some are already ready. Some have found me. When the others are ready or when the clock strikes an unthinkable number, they will find me. They will find the truth. I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Nireke, 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 mureke, mikireke, nireke, mureke, nareke, nareke, mukireke, <laughs> mukireke, mikireke. She's no longer swayed by the things of this world or any other world. She's learned, goodness, Kate has learned enlightenment, guys. She's still, she's cool as a cucumber. She's learned enlightenment. Things are going on around her, even as we speak, even in the room she's in. She does not move. This meditation, whoever she studied under, even if she did it by herself, 
She has reached true enlightenment. This is beautiful. And I keep feeling this. I don't think she could have reached this state in, in her this life as Kate Middleton. Because her body was already too weak to fully embody this, this full energy that I feel. It's the energy of stillness and peace. It's very much like a Buddha energy she's holding. She is holding a Buddha energy. A stillness. A, a, a Krishna energy. A Shiva. Shiva energy. Shiva, the Shakti energy. She's holding that. She did, she must have studied, she must have studied with an Indian guru. This is what I'm sensing. But ooh, I'm here in Bangladesh. She, her body, her body couldn't handle it. This is another reason why Kate was forced out of her body. It wasn't just because of William and the king. It wasn't because of this event that happened. It wasn't because of the abuse and the torture. All of this is alleged now. This is what she's saying. She was forced out of her body by her higher oversoul because her body was riddled with too much pain. Her body was diseased. It was weak. It was not properly nourished and fed, not physically or spiritually. So in a way, hindsight, she sees I pushed myself out of my own body because I was always reaching for this level of enlightenment. I would have never reached that in the, in the physical uh, vessel. Of Kate Middleton that would have never happened so she wants everyone to know that but even when other people do things to us it doesn't matter because ultimately it is our oversoul that creates the scenarios that agrees to it she understands that she agreed to this because where she is now she would never be an enlightened being had she not gone through that and she has no regrets absolutely no regrets She says, my love is generational. So she's given reference to not just her children, how she will just love them generationally, but she's giving a reference to the essence of her. She will be loved generationally by people. And she knows this. Even though she was not Princess Diana, she never tried to be. She, she always just wanted to be the best her, you know? But she found... She was trying to find, this is what she's saying her mistake was. Her mistake was she was trying to find the best her through someone else, through the eyes of the establishment, and more importantly, through the eyes of William. But when she had her children, this is when she truly learned what her, be her best self was. When she viewed herself through the eyes of her children, and that's what made her change. That's what made her, especially that last child, Louis, that is what made her change. That is what made her more spiritual. Yeah. She will be remembered generationally. It's in her genes. She's left. She's done her job. It's funny because you know how they looked at her just as a breeder, right? Um, she's given reference to that. She's like, I was a good breeder. And she's still a good breeder because she's in this creative energy that will never end. And as her children give birth to children and children, She's saying she's still a good breeder. Like she's seeing just how much more people she will birth just because of her, just because of she gave birth. So she's still making reference to, I am a good breeder. And she sees generationally how, how her lineage will not only get her essence, her physical DNA, but now her as the enlightened being, they will also get that celestial DNA. She will be spoon feeding that to them. And so she's a good breeder and this is generational. You, you cannot, she's just making reference to, it doesn't even matter if, if you don't want to look for me or if you do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the establishment feel. doesn't matter the cover up. It doesn't matter because guess what? I will be remembered generationally through my children, through the people, through the public and through myself. I have completed I've completed my journey. She's very at peace. There is no regrets. And you know, it's funny because she's not even like specifically mentioning her children anymore in the individual sense. So 
from the last reading, this actually shows me the growth of her soul. She's she's more pulling into that collective energy, right? And she's talking more collectively. She's talking more from a higher from a higher viewpoint, vantage point even. This is where she is. This is where she is. I want to pull one more message before I have to leave. She said, when I made my metamorphosis from the butterfly, full expansion here in the heart space, a love flooded in that I didn't know existed. It truly is. Your heart truly is a superpower. So much love, so much fill, fillness, fulfillment and fullness in the heart. It's funny because if you try to give a human being this amount of love, they would, they would get an enlarged heart. Their heart would not be able to handle it. So like when she fills me up with this, like stretches my chest cavity, there's so much like love floating in that it hurt. It pains my heart. So there are some people that just transition because they are enlightened. It's not that there's anything wrong with them per se. They just transition because they are so enlightened that their physical vessel cannot hold the expansion that they're being gifted. Right? This is what she wants to say. So this is uh, kind of part two of Kate Middleton's soul. Um, a long walk home, uh, guys. And it's beautiful because she is morphing more and more into a collective consciousness. No longer speaking kind of from individual. She's um, she's on her way. And that's very beautiful. And we'll tap back in um, with her beautiful energy, guys. But just subscribe to the channel, guys. And yeah, let me know. Um, email me, instructors number four humanity at gmail.com if you would like to come and get your own quantum telekinetic reading with remote healing, guys. Bring your friends, bring your family. We're going to see you guys individually, and then we're going to see you guys collectively. Let's find out if there's any outstanding soul trauma or, or debt. We're all interconnected. And that's what we've been finding with these pairs have been coming to me. You can certainly just book a single live session with us as well. Um, but if you have best friends or sisters or sister and brother or whatever the combination, children, mother and child or father and child, that would just be amazing because you guys are born together you guys are in each other's life for a reason and part of that reason is to heal together is to actually heal past life trauma and pain so that's what i'm here to help you with too, guys and i also do past life regressions as well so just email me and i'll email you a list of services guys but i love you i love you i love you and so it is as we walk together in divine love be well be well guys bye